Wanderers. 1966, Cosmos 110. Ugolyok the coal and Viterok the breeze orbit the Earth for 22 days. A record for human or dog till Skylab eclipses them. The dogs land not on land but ocean and are retrieved alive. 1961, Karabal Sputnik 4 and 5. Chornushka, the black one, strapped beside one guinea pig and several mice, and Zvyozdechka, the star, with dummy human companion. Each circles once, then re-enters. The tiniest cosmonauts, the guinea pig and mice, slip the historical record, as does the dummy. 1960, Karabal Sputnik 1K4. Komita, the comet, and Shutka, the joke. The launcher sees mid-flight, the mission aborts, but the Sputnik's re-entry capsule makes landfall as a cracked metal egg out of which the space dogs hatch, minus albumin. They have seen nothing in orbit. The thick satellite hull held no porthole, but under the rocket's heavy impetus, they have felt surges of toxic elation, as if their hearts lost their substance. Though buckled in their harnesses and gauges, in their guts and liquids they flew, weightless. 1960, Karal Sputnik 3. Chulka the bee and Mushka the fly. Their craft launches and orbits safely, but burns up in re-entry, turned to a streak of light as it hits the air. 1960, Karabal Sputnik 2. Bielka the squirrel and Strelka the arrow aboard. A year after their mission, Strelka bears a litter of six pups. Khrushchev presents one named Pushinka, the little pup, to young Caroline Kennedy in a complicated gesture of diplomacy. The first daughter, startled, holds the first dog, the first child of a post-orbit generation, warily. The president himself cannot feel ease around the dog, who laps at her water sometimes with a sick sort of knowing. Though born in gravity, the little puff is no child of simple rising and falling, and soon Kennedy seeks the moon landing, less the fight for a parcel of unmarred cosmos than a need to fall into fellow gravity, anywhere, nearest one, however weak, however airless. At first, the dog must be kenneled like the other animals, the horse from Ayub Khan, Leprechaun the pony, the terrier from Joe. But Caroline warms to her Pushinka and takes her to the bed. Pushinka sleeps at the first daughter's feet and lies sleeping as most dogs do. One night, weeks collecting many such nights, Jack feels in his throat a tiny bead of breath that wishes free. Pulls from inside his neck, grips firm to lift him as if like a hound by the scruff back to what the clouds he coughs hard the muscular bead breaks he walks to the window opens it a crack lets in the air of the district sobbing as hot wash rags 1960 Karabal sputnik Chaika the seagull and Lisichka the fox. The combustion, the combustion chambers in the rocket boosters burn through and rocket and Sputnik explode less than 30 seconds into flight. We've, all, we've, we've always known how quickly bodies fall to fire, but in recent centuries we've added more exotic species of burning. Fire by spark of electricity, by gasoline, by hydrogen, by coal, uranium, chemical exposure by explosion upon roadway, an explosion upon water, an explosion upon liftoff, on landing, even at the apex of the sky. 1957, Sputnik 2. Only one month after the Earth gains a second moon, companion simply named Sputnik, satellite, as they would all be named. Another craft launches with one live passenger, the first wayward earthling aboard. Culled from the street dogs of Moscow, a mongrel and therefore gifted with mongrel vigor. She's named Laika, the barker, the yapper, though the American media will dub her Mutnik. She lifts off, 
the news breaks. We learn she's caught orbit and now circles. Soon we ask, how on earth will they get Mutnik down? But the Soviets admit that retrieval was never a goal. They assume their Leica will have lived for four days after launch, eating gelled food, spinning blindly over the earth, tracked over the surface through Europe, South America, Australia, India, pulsing radio beacon instead of her eponymous yapping. Some say she survives seven days, maybe 10, before the ship loses power and oxygen in the tiny canister depletes. 50 years later, we learn that she dies within hours as many dogs die. The sealed tank overheats like a parked car in summer. She circles our head for a year and a half, dead pup in a dead ship, before gravity brings her down to scatter dog and sarcophagus. Who knew something as ubiquitous as air could pull a satellite to ashes? And it's too romantic to mention that her particles still seed clouds, rain down, turn to sugar, then to wood, perhaps burn again. She's lent her dust to 50 years of cycles. Matter is a loose crochet of energy. Not even energy can die. <laughs>